with five years under my belt as an ex freight conductor, I'm going to switch some trains out here in Potash on Train Sim World 2. So if you want to see how it's done, stick around and let's get into it. How is everyone doing today? Welcome back to Zero Gaming. And this is a realism video again. And uh, by the title, we are in Potash. Okay. So we have some empties and loads that need to be built on an outbound train. And then we got some empty hoppers that came in from an inbound. So we just need to get these switched out. And uh, once we're done with that, we are done with our duty. So let me go in the office and uh, get some paperwork. And then I'll see you guys at the locomotives. Alright, so we got two SD40s today. Uh, the UP1766 and the UP1681. And so, yes, uh, we are going to do this just like it would be in real life. Alright, uh, the locomotives are turned off. Uh, handbrakes are set in all the cars, so you will not find this in the game Because normally all of this comes already uh, On and all that stuff, but in today's video. I'm going to show you how it's really done on the game uh, Let's go through the tracks a little bit and just show you what needs to be done in the yard All right, so behind me and the uh, camera is towards um, Brendo or Thompson uh, so the middle track is going to be our main track, the one to the left, uh, we'll call it track one. And then that little small track right on the right hand side is going to be our caboose. And once we are done with today, all we got to do is tie down right there. All right, so here is the empty covered hoppers that we need to stop, um, spot in the potash track so they can get those loaded. And it's uh, quite a few cars that you can see. And so we need to run around these cars, get them spotted down there. We also got loaded cover hoppers that's on the uh, other side of the yard. And then like five or six tank cars that are, were emptied that need to go back to Brendel. All right, so that's where those empty cover hoppers are going to be spotted, right in this general area. We're not going to get them loaded, just spot them. And then here's our tank cars. Okay, so this track right here. That's running right along this one is still the main line okay and our power is obviously tied down on the main by the crossing and all the way back here uh, are our loaded cover hoppers so we're going to get this train built and we are going to stick the outbound train ready to go on track one which is all the way back there by the caboose track and um I guess I get these other covered hoppers spotted in the potash track. All right, so both our power is turned off, and what we're gonna do now is get this all the way cut in. So I can kind of show you in the first one, and you did uh, don't want to knock off your handbrake just yet until we get this unit rolling, and don't mind Becky, she's. Um, waiting for us for whatever odd reason. So anytime that the units are turned off, you just want to throw that knife switch and then turn on any everything that's in the black panel on first. Without that on, the unit will not uh, run. So, and you can see that these are pretty. Um, known switches right i also turn on my warning devices so if you were wanting the alerter that's that button right there utilities i don't know what that's for just throw that up it should have a a little sign but it doesn't headlights lights and radio turn that all on and then you just want to come here and make sure that it's on start and that is good to go now we just come back here to the catwalk and it's going to be this door All right no where is it at oh here we go 
frame it, 5 to 10 seconds. And you'll hear it kind of stop. And then we'll crank it this way. Hold it. Alright, so they haven't fixed that bug yet. So it looks like it started with, with the primer. And that's about it. Um, this is going to do the same thing for the next one. And I'll just come to here and turn on run. Alright. And since that's all on, we can go get that next unit to cut in. So I will see you back here in the engineer seat. Alright, since now both units are up and running, I'm going to knock off these handbrakes here. Alright, so we get this back unit untied. Alright, so we got everything cut in. Our, we have rear headlights. They are on dim. And then we got our headlights, ditch lights, and number lights. Our track warrant will be written to this unit. Now we are in we are in yard limits, so yard limits are as always at moving restricted speed, and always pay attention to your switches. But normally you will get a track warrant, and basically your track warrant from dispatch will state that uh, these are the bulletins or these are the general orders, and this is the timetable that you have to refer to. Okay, so that's what the track warrant would give you. I think it's a box 16. Um, it's been a while since I've seen one. So I think it's a box 16. I'm not 100% sure. So we are going to be the UP 1681. This is the unit we're going to be running out today. So first things first, let's get a locomotive brake test done. So 1681, release them. Get a release, independent. Good, set, release. Good release, 10 pounds. Good set, bail him. Good release, so number 10. Good release release sorry uh, get set release them all right 1681 that is a good local brake test uh, let me get on your rear and we'll be ready to go all right 1681 up and riding uh, we are lined for the main let's start them back we are good for about 22 zero so, we, I'm going to do the free roam camera as the conductor, and I'm going to leave that my actual person within the locomotive. It's going to take too long to get up and down, up and down, up and down, so that's how we're going to do it. I hope in the future they bring multiplayer to this game, so that's going to change everything. But uh, you can see that those tank cars were spotted, and it looks like they used this little um, crossing to get their truck back up in there and get that stuff unloaded. And that's ethanol. I don't know what they're using ethanol over here for, but that's what it is. And any time, we just always keep in contact with the engineer. And so I told him we're good for 20 cars. And so roughly when he thinks we win about 10 he's gonna either say hey how much longer do we got or he'll start slowing down okay so there's always communication between the engineer and conductor uh, since we are light power and light power just means just locomotive uh, I would normally use hand signals it's much easier you don't have to really talk on the radio so and anytime you use hand signals the engineer will always respond back with whistles. Okay. All right, uh, 1681. 
let's go um, buy more. And again, since we're in yard limits, I don't know if this switch is against us. Because on yard limits, you can leave a switch however uh, it was left lined. Now in your, you know, your general bulletins, all right, 1681, we are, that's what is that? Line against us, bring you can, bring it to a stop. So for like your uh, bulletins, your timetable, all that stuff, it, it tells you all of that information. So for example, since this is, um, the main line and normally you always will line them back for the main but since we're in yard uh, they could be left in whatever last you use okay all right 1681 I'll line up for the main up and riding right let's start them back let's go five to check that next switch Let's make it three. Two, now two. Last one to go. Half. And stop it when you can, 1681. And that's always, always giving them the car accounts and all that stuff. And we, I always would tell my engineer what track we're going down so that they can know in the back of their mind where we're going. All right, 681, back up and riding. We are lined up for the main. Let's start them back. Let's go eight on a hook. Right, let's make it three now. I looked a lot farther than I thought. Two. Last one. Half. Ten more feet. And stop them. Stop. All right, give me a stretch. And we always stretch our um, couples just to make sure that we got everything. And you can see we, we are good to go. All right, 681, that's a good hook. Uh, show me in between. And so they will always uh, do set and centered. And what that means is they will set uh, they're independent to fully and then put the reverser in the neutral position. All right, let's go knock off these handbrakes now. Would this handle work? No. Normally you'll pop that little handle right there and it would just shoot that chain right open. So you don't have to untie them. And let's see. Okay, so there's only three handbrakes on this cut. All right, 1681, we're in the clear. We'll be um, up and riding on the cars. Whenever you're ready, take them ahead. We're going to have to clear that track uh, with the tank cars. So you'll probably have to hook up to that stuff on the main.
I hope no one has to cross this. Cause we'll be on this for a little while. All right, so nice and easy. And you'll see that way it's gonna push us just like that. There it is. All right. And for some reason, when I hook up to a big train, it just does not like it. So again, we'll give it a stretch. And you can see we ain't moving. So that tells me we are hooked. All right, so I got those handbrakes. And again, you don't have to put handbrakes um, that's, but that's what it will normally be like. You will be having handbrakes on cars. So, and I always say a rule of thumb is more than two handbrakes. Uh, three, if you want to be safe. And if you feel like you need to pit more, you can always pit more. All right, 1681, I am in the clear. Whenever you're ready, you can take an A head. Uh, we should have plenty of room on that end for you. Uh, let's go about, I'm going to say 20-ish cars to clear. And I'm going to see if I'm right. So we're going to do this 20. And that's another thing too, is once you work on a specific job for a while, you'll know roughly if you'll have room. So... And two, before I started this little mission, I made sure that all those switches were lined up for us. Right, let's go 10 one -oh. All right, looks like uh, we still need about another seven or so. Let's see, it should be six right here. Yeah, I see one more. All right, let's go five now to clear it. Three, two, last one. Half and stop it when you can. Sixteen eighty one. All right, so we are lined up, and any time you throw a switch, you always want to look at your um, gap and the gap. So here's a gap right here. Okay. And you see how that this little thin piece of rail is budged? That's what you want. Because if you have a gap, it's called, uh, you'll pick a switch and you'll derail a train. Um, the other thing that could cause that if it's a thin flange. And so a flange is this piece of part right there that sticks up that kind of holds the wheel in the rail. That's a flange. All right. And the other thing that you might see, but obviously it's not going to be in the game, you will see derails roughly around the clearance point, which would be maybe in the general area. There, a lot of times will be derails, especially if it's a track that customers unload from, but this one doesn't. All right, 1681, we are lined up for that tank track. Uh, no derail back at the hook whenever you're ready we can start them back let's go about eight on the hook 
And anytime you talk to your engineer, you always explain everything you're doing. So if you're up and riding, if you're walking, if you're back at the hook, everything. So that he understands in his mind what is going on back there. Because if you're riding, he needs to know that I need to keep it under this speed. Um, or I need to control the slack. All of that different stuff. Make it two. Last one to go. Half. And stop them when you can. Alright, give me a little bit of slack. There we go. Uh, and you can see that how, did you see how it pulled like that? I don't need him to do a pull test. So, there's no pull test there. But uh, if you're curious, 1170 is ethanol, and these are M2, so they're not full full uh, ethanol. Uh, but the thing, though, is you do have to have at least five buffer cars between the locomotives and hazmat cars. So, to make it much easier, we're going to put these guys at the rear. The other two, uh, the other thing, the rule of thumb that you always want to know is you always want loads closer to your head end and your empty is mostly in the rear. So that's how I'm going to build this train. Alright, 1681, I am in the clear. Whenever you're ready, you can take it ahead. We are going to clear that uh, track one switch on that end, shove this train back, put it in the clear. All right, I will see you on the other side of the yard. Last one to go. It's hard to go back and forth between the locomotive controls and the camera. Half a tank car left. Alright, 1681, whenever you can, bring them to a stop. And I, when I used to have a big trains like this, I would not throw that switch right away. So I will let that slack run back like this. And I'm going to say, okay, is it, where is it going to stop? Now, normally I would stop at just uh, another car or so, but I'm not going to today. 
You can call me a rebel. Okay. All right, 1681, you're lined up for track one. Plenty of room, no derail. Whenever you can, start him back. You are good for 550. And you can see our locomotive there in the middle and it's a pretty good sized train. All right, six and eighty-one is set and centered. Okay. So yeah, the, the clearance point will be roughly probably about right here. So we went just a little bit past it, but that's fine. And if you're wondering what is a clearance point, it is a marking. So it's usually uh, the track department will mark them with uh, a tie or um, spray paint or something like that. And that's basically saying that if, if as long as a piece of equipment, railroad car, um, track department equipment, engines are past a certain point that is marked, you can go down any other track and you won't sideswipe it. So that's what the clearance points are. So in case you're curious. And since we got a pretty decent train, uh, we'll put three on these ones. Maybe four. Ah, we'll just do three. Should be fine. And you notice that I, I put a automatic on? Well, the automatic is going to help hold these railroad cars from swashing, which they shouldn't be swashing with cover hoppers, but um, it helps stabilize them so they don't move when in, uh, the conductor's time breaks. Two, it, it's easier for us as conductors or brakemen to actually tie handbrakes that has a set on them. Okay. All right, six and eighty-one. We are in the clear. Whenever you're ready, take a mayhead. Ah, stop him! Got a hook on us. Okay. So, there's a. Here's a little pointer. If you don't want it to hook on you, leave it independent, rev it up to notch three or four. Once you get a pretty good amperage, release that, and it's gonna pull it just like that. So you don't even have to worry about uh, the train rolling back on you. All right, 1681, we are lined back up for the main. Whenever you're ready, start it back. It's good for 550 so far. All right, so now this outbound train, loaded train, whatever you want to call it, is ready to go. So whenever that crew comes up, all they got to do is clear out what they're going to do with these empties. And then just pretty much pick this train up, air test, and going back to uh, Brendel Thompson, something like that. It's with seven on the stop now. Four now, four. Three. Make it two.
last one to go. Half. And stop him in there, 1681. And you see how that rolled right back? I would have picked the switch. Now normally, like I said, I would stop it over there, but I'm going to be a rebel today. Throw that switch right away. I right, let's go 10 on the stop now, 1-0. We are good for 15. So I said, all right, we're stopping 10, but good for 15. That means that we have five cars past my stop that we have room to do. So for some reason, he can't stop it right away. We know that we can. Let's go four. Three. Last one. Half. And stop them. And uh, in between. All right, set and centered. Okay. And we're just going to put three on these guys also. Uh, yeah, we'll put three. Alright, 6 and 81, we're in the clear. Whenever ready, start them back. Clear switch. And um, so two horn blasts like this means forward and three short blasts means you're going backwards, okay? I hope uh, you enjoyed this little emission scenario, realistic, whatever you want to call it. And if you did, please uh, consider giving this video a like, as it would help out the channel. If you want to see more of these, or if you're needing help with something else in the game, leave it down in the comments down below. And if you're new here, and you love Train Sim just like I do, Please consider subscribing and don't forget to click that bell for notifications so you don't mess it on the next ones. It's got a little bit more to get to that caboose track and we'll tie it down there. Now obviously the game's not going to let me tie it down correctly so I wish I can do that. All right. So once this locomotive passes this switch I'll throw it back for mainline movement so that Whoever comes through next doesn't have to worry about it.
Awesome. Yeah, they didn't let me uh, tie down. But thanks again for watching this video. And um, till next time, we will see you all later.